One last discussion to sum up price elasticity of demand is the discussion about consumer surplus. What is consumer surplus? Well, we discussed this earlier, that consumer surplus is the difference between what amount people are willing to pay minus what they actually pay. And we also learned this, that it is the area under the demand curve above the market price. Also, just to wrap it up, we also talked about the idea that when the price goes down, the consumer surplus goes up because with the same willingness to pay, if the price goes down, what you actually pay goes down and therefore consumers will pocket a higher consumer surplus. Hence, the lower the market price, the higher the consumer surplus because uh, when the market price goes down, consumer surplus will go up. On the other hand, when the market price goes up, consumer surplus will go down. Now, when we look at PED or price elasticity of demand, we're looking at basically consumers' willingness to pay. If you look at the formula, consumer surplus is simply what we are willing to pay minus what we actually pay. So when the price of a good is what we actually pay, then the willingness to pay is simply price elasticity of demand. Lower the elasticity of demand, higher will be the willingness to pay. And similarly, higher the elasticity of demand, lower will be the willingness to pay. And the reason is very simple, because when your elasticity of demand is low, then basically we say that there are not many substitutes available. And if that is the case, then consumers will be willing to pay a higher price because they don't have substitutes to switch if the price of the good changes. Vice versa, if the good is elastic in demand, then one may argue that they have it has many substitutes available. And because of this availability of substitutes, one may also say that consumers are willing to pay less. And as a result of that, consumer surplus will be lower since you have a lower willingness to pay. Let's now look at two extreme cases, one of a perfectly inelastic good and another one of a perfectly elastic good and see how consumer surplus will vary with both of these cases. In the case of a perfectly inelastic good, we argue that the consumer is willing to pay any price because remember this is a good which has for a perfectly no substitute elastic good and if that is the case then that is completely one may vertical. argue that the consumer surplus so if you look at the demand curve because you're willing to pay any the price demand your life is perfectly on vertical so let's see this in terms of and diagram. this means the consumer is willing to pay any price let's say this is my supply curve my supply curve is upward sloping and let's say the equilibrium price is p naught now what we are actually paying is p naught therefore but what are we willing to pay and the answer is any price in that case all this area will be my consumer surplus so my consumer surplus in this case is going to be infinite as i am willing to pay any price if the supply curve shifts upward or the price goes up for any reason consumer will still pay the market price because he needs that good it is important for his survival and it is uh, a life-saving drug on the other hand, our second case is of a perfectly elastic good. Now, this is a good which is kind of a good that has a lot of substitutes available. And in the case of a perfectly elastic good, consumer is willing to pay only the market price, let's say P. And since this is the price he actually pays, consumer surplus is zero. Why? Because what you're willing to pay is exactly equal to what you actually pay. If we look at the demand curve for such a good, the demand curve, as we said, is perfectly horizontal. Therefore, what you're willing to pay is exactly what the market price is, let's say P0, and let's say this is my supply curve. My supply curve, of course, is upward sloping. I get myself this quantity Q0, and therefore, you can see this that there is no area under the demand curve. This area, by the way, which is under the demand curve above the supply curve, we call this uh, the producer surplus. It's not consumer surplus because producer is going to supply this good at P0, but his minimum price is, of course, this one. So while the consumer surplus is zero, you might have some producer surplus. And what we can make out of this discussion is this idea that when the price elasticity of demand for a good is low. This means the consumers are willing to pay much more.
Therefore, the lower the elasticity of demand, the more consumers willing to pay and therefore higher will be the consumer surplus. So we have an inverse relationship therefore where lower PED or PED falls, we'll say consumer surplus rises. Similarly, we said this earlier also when the price falls, we saw consumer surplus also rises. So consumer surplus therefore depends on two things. One is what you are actually paying the price of the good and therefore there is an inverse relationship. Lower price means higher consumer surplus. And secondly, your willingness to pay, which is elasticity of demand, where we also say this when the PED falls, the good becomes inelastic, consumer surplus rises.